These are all the questions that we're gonna do, but I'm going to be splitting them up over different slides just so that we have more space to write. Okay, so those are the seven questions. So let's begin. The table below shows the weight to the nearest kilogram of 27 participants in a weight loss program. Okay, calculate the range. Okay, so the range is always the highest minus the lowest, which would be 156 minus 56, which is 100. Write down the mode. The mode is the value that appears the most. So it's the number that you see the most often. Okay, so let's have a look. I see that there are 271s. Let's just see if there's any other numbers that are repeating. No, it's just that. Okay, so that would be the answer, 71. Determine the median. Okay, so the formula for median is n plus one over two. So how many people are there? There are 27 people, okay. So we'll say 27 plus one over two, which is 28 over two, which is 14. That's not the answer, that is the position. So we go position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that would be the answer, 93. Determine the interquartile range. Interquartile range, which I'll just call it as IQR, is the upper quarter, which is Q3, minus the lower quarter, which is Q1. Now, we need to go find each of those. So to find Q3, well, let's start, yeah, doesn't, uh, let's start with Q1. To find the lower quarter, you say N plus one over four, okay? So let's do that so long. So that's 27 plus one over four, which is 28 divided by four, which is seven but that's not the answer, we must go to position number seven. So we go to position number seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 82. Okay, so that's Q1. The formula for Q3 is also n plus one over four, but then you multiply that with a three like that. Okay, so that's gonna end up giving us, um, if you had to go work it all out, you should get 21. That's not the answer, that's the position. So we go to position number 21. Now I'm not gonna waste your guys' time counting all of that, but it should be 19, 20, 21. It should be this one over here, 127. Okay, so we have Q3 and we have Q1, so now we can say the interquartile range is just gonna be um, 127 minus 82, and that would be 45. Moving on, use the number line provided in the answer book. Okay, so they probably would have given us a number line to draw a box and whisker diagram for the above data. Okay, so a box and whisker, right, has five different things. Let's write those down, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I can't fit that in, hold on. One, two, three, four, and five. So this is what a box and whisker has. It's got five different parts. It's got a minimum value, a maximum, and then it's just got Q1, then it's got the median, and then it's got Q3. Okay, so, what we do is, they, they would have given us a number line, but let's just go draw our own number line. All right, so what we do is we go to, um, I decided to just go get the number line. Okay, so the minimum value. So the minimum value is 56, so be careful here, 52, 54, 56, 58. Okay, so that works out. So they're going up in twos. So 56 would be here, so we put a little line over there. Let's go to the maximum value. So we've done the minimum. The maximum is 156, so that would be over here. There we go. Okay, now Q1, we already worked out as 82. Remember that? The median we worked out as 93. And then Q3 we worked out as 127. Okay, so Q1 is 82, which would be here. Median is 93. Okay, so that's gonna be in between those two lines. So it would be like that. And then 127 would be 122, 124, 126, uh, 128. Okay, so it'll be in between these two lines. So that would be like that over there. And that's it. Now what you do is you take the middle three and you just make a nice little box. Okay, mine's completely off there. 
more like that. And then you just complete that little box. Come on, Kev. There we go. And then you just connect the little whiskers over here and over here. Boom. Okay, so that is our box and whisker for two marks. Jeez, like these people are stingy with their marks. Okay, now it says uh, determine the standard deviation. Okay, so now this is all calculator work. Oh my goodness, we have to go put all of this on the calculator. How stressful when you're in an exam. I remember, it's like, am I forgetting one? Have I entered the values correctly? <laughs> I don't have time to go check again. All right, but let me show you guys what to do. So, let me just make sure. Okay, so we're gonna put our calculator into stats mode. So we say, you might have the blue, pink, or black calculator of the Casio. I've just got the silver one. But you're just looking for, you're gonna press mode, and then you're looking for the button that says stat. And then you're gonna look for the one that says um, one minus VAR, which is, in my calculator, it's a one. And now we're just gonna go into these five million values. My goodness, because we always have so much time in the exam. Okay, so I'll see you guys later. I'm just gonna go into all these values. With the 71, you can just enter the 71 twice, okay? Some people have a second column called frequency. Uh, if you do it like that, then you just put 71, and then in the frequency, you'll just change it to a two. All right, guys, and four hours later, I am nearly done. 144, 156, thank goodness. Okay, so once all the values have been entered, you're then gonna push uh, AC, then you're gonna go to shift, Okay, then you're gonna come down here to your number one on your calculator. You can see it just above there, it says stat. That's what we want, so you push one, and then you're gonna go to four, which is VAR, and then we're looking for the weird button, which on my calculator is number three. Um, well, it's the number three option over here. It's got that weird, like, little apple with a little, s I don't know what that thing is, but it's the one with the X and the little circle over there. Okay, so it's number three on my calculator. That is called standard deviation, press equals, and there we go, 25,84 if we round that off to two decimal places. So we can just say 25.84. You don't have to show any working out for that one. They know that you're using the calculator. Yes, there is that other long method that they probably showed you in class, but you're never gonna have to do that in an exam. Maybe in one of your school tests, um, some schools are a bit weird and they want you to do that, which I think is quite stupid. But um, for the most part, they just ask you to use the quick calculator method. All right, so that's that. 1.7. The person who weighs 127 kilograms state, states sorry, that she weighs more than one standard deviation above the mean. Do you agree? Motivate your answer with calculations. Okay, so they said more than one standard deviation. Okay, so we at least calculated the standard deviation as 25.84 in the previous question above the mean. Haha, -ha. so we need the mean, okay? So uh, the mean is the average. But now, if you haven't cleared your calculator, then you are lucky because you can actually get the mean straight from your calculator. If you have cleared all of the values from your calculator, then you would have to go add all of these numbers together. You know how to calculate the average, right? You go calc you add all of these numbers together and then you divide by 27 because that's how many numbers there are. But for those of you that still have the values on your calculator, then what we're gonna do is the following. I'll show you what to do. Okay, so this is still where I got the mean. So what I'll do is I'll just press AC again. Uh, so the values that I've entered are still there. Can I actually just show you guys something? Um, there is a way that you can see your values. So you, the way that you can still see if your values are there, you just press shift and then you go to one and then you go to number two, which is data. And there they all are, see that? Um, so you can still, you can modify them or see if you've done them correctly. I remember when I was a student, I didn't know this. So I would literally go do everything twice just to make sure. But if you're in a test, guys, just press shift, one, and then data. And then you can just go check and you can see that you've entered the values correctly. Okay, so those values are still whole or held on the calculator. So to find the mean, we can just press shift one. We go to number four again. Now it's that option number two over there with the X with the line at the top. That is another thing for mean or the average. Press that one and there we have 98.59. So the average is 98 point, whoopsie Kevin, five nine. Okay, so that's your average or your mean. 
Okay, so this person says that she is more than one standard deviation above the mean. So what we do is we know that the mean is 98.59. So if we add one standard deviation on to that, how much do we get? 124.43. Now this girl is 127. Yes, so she is more, she is more then one standard deviation above the mean. So do you agree with this person? Uh, yes, we do agree with this person. And then you would have showed all of your calculations like that.